What's up, Fish Tank people? FishTankTV.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you in front of the Fluball B26. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So today, I want to bring it to you in front of this tank here. Uh, I got a no maintenance tank. This tank does not get very much maintenance at all. Uh, I actually was out of town and I cannot find uh, one of the fish, the one and only fish that I have in here. So I am uh, somewhat a little concerned about that, but we're going to do a tour of this tank today. I'm also going to do a little bit of a, uh, I'm going to give a tour of this tank and I'm going to talk about kind of like my philosophy with this tank right here because this tank has been a lot of fun for me. Um, I'm going to break down like the size, the filter. Um, the lights I got on it, how I'm going to do a little bit of uh, water change on this bad boy right here. But uh, this is my first uh, bow front tank. So like I've never had, like it's hard to see, <clears throat> it's hard to film quite frankly. Um, and uh, it's it's hard to like show the bow front, but I really do like the way the bow front comes out. And I'm going to like pick the camera up and move around and, and show y'all uh, how it's going on. But first, <clears throat> I mean, I never keep like small tanks, like a 26 gallon tank is a small tank for me. Uh, note, this video uh, is based on a lot of you guys want to hear about shrimp, so I am going to talk a lot about the shrimp, but I've never kept like the small, uh, smaller tanks for me. Like I like my average size tank is like a 75 gallon. I got the 220 that's the filthy skanky mess over there. What's up everybody? And um, yeah, so it's a mess. So I got this tank. So this tank is like relatively easy to work on. So what I've done is I've tried to make it easy on myself uh, to, to do the work on this tank, but it's like it's a 26 gallon tank So it's like not that hard to actually do anything on uh, You can see the water levels gone down. I was out of town last week So the water level is down a little bit and you can hear the filter running um, This I mean this thing's powered by by Fluval head to toe uh, with the exception of the lights, but this is uh Running and the water level is low So I want to give a tour around kind of how this thing is, is set up and what I got going on uh, and a little update on the plant, so we're going to talk about the equipment. Um, this plant right here is Junk Ass Rippins. I mean, how great of a name is that? Junkus Rippins. Totally, uh, totally growing. Uh, it's, it's actually from United States. Look at that big sherry shrimp right there. Um, it's actually native to the United States, and it's been growing up and up and up. And I actually need to bring some of it out to the greenhouse and really get that uh, going in the greenhouse because I'm going to do some cuttings of it. And I can actually probably stand up and do that and show you guys that. But Junk Ass Rippins has been a cool one. I like the contrast of it. And then I've got over here, I've got the Baby Tears. Now this is the Hemianthus. This is the regular, uh, not the Dwarf Baby Tears. That's a big distinction because the Dwarf Baby Tears sucks. And the Big Baby Tears is awesome. Uh, when you think of foreground plants, think of uh, like they're grown in the shallow of the water, right? So they're grown in like shallow water on the edge of a bank. So when you have to imitate that to really get a lot of uh, light to them because they're in shallow water, the light penetrates deep uh, quickly down through shallow water. So when you're like, I want a carpet, I want foreground plants, um, don't uh, don't roll with the real high tanks, roll with the lower stuff because you're gonna have better, better growth down there for sure. So uh, I'm loving the baby tears down here. Uh, I'm loving the boost of Flander in here as well. The boost of Flander is doing really well. Um, the boost of Flander is actually, you guys are asking the questions, the boost is actually what's on the uh, on the tree right here. And I've got a bunch of different varieties of it. Uh, a couple of them up on my site too. Don't you love when people call you while you're on a live video? Um, so yeah, I've got a bunch of varieties of the boost of Flandra uh, up in here that I'm pretty pumped about. Uh, and it, it does really well. It does better under the ultraviolet light, which I'm getting from the halide. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But so there's the boost, there's the baby tears, and that's uh, really it. I do have a Madagascar lace plant that you guys can check out. Uh, it's actually kind of gone into that dormant phase, though. It's really kind of just faded away, and I'm a little sad about it. But uh, it is what it is. Thank you, Christy, for the likes and shares, uh, if you are liking this. And uh, so the, the Madagascar lace has kind of uh, fallen off a little bit. But um, what, uh, you know, so whatever. The Madagascar list has fallen off uh, just a tad. But those that have a dormant period, they come back. And then I've also got in here, let's see. I've got one big Apongaton in the back. But I'm going to have to pick up the camera to show you guys that. So while I'm sitting here, um, yeah, I am really enjoying this tank. It has been neglected. But um, I, 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 oh, I can't forget it. The Kernum Calmastrata over here is, is totally awesome. So. Now I want to show uh, what I'm going to do on this tank here. I'm going to attempt to just tilt this up a little bit. All right, so you guys can see that. Okay, so I've got this big jug above, 
And what I'm gonna do with this giant jug is I've actually got it filled uh, with water from my tap. And uh, the tap is, uh, the tap water here is, it's been raining, it's got high chlorine in it. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this from our friends at Fluval. I got the Aqua Plus right here in the mix. And I'm gonna take this stuff. Now I use uh, the Aqua Plus, I use this right here. And I'm gonna use, it says to use, and this is a big tip too. If it's been raining in your area, uh, always use, I try to use double. So this says to remove chlorine, uh, treats five milliliters, treats 10 gallons. So I'm gonna use a whole five milliliters, even though I'm not used, adding 10 gallons to this, just because uh, it has been raining. And when it rains here, they flood the lines. You see this? They flood the lines with, uh, with chlorine and chlorine. So I'm gonna add more than uh, the usual here. So I'm gonna use more of this stuff because why not? I mean, when in doubt, uh, add more. Better that than killing your fish, right? So I'm gonna add this to it. Now, this, I don't know how you can see how this goes all the way up there, but I'm pouring that in. Now what I do as a trick down here is I actually take the, uh, I got this big jug, I bought it at a garage sale actually, and I do recommend this uh, for folks, is you take, uh, I use an Airstone is in the bottom of this. Now I'll just stand up and show you guys this. The uh, Airstone, all right, so this is the jug. And this is probably, probably holds two gallons if I had to guess. All right, no, I just undid that. Well, it's live, so we're spilling water on the floor live. Oh, yeah. And um, so there, the water's spilling. I had it all pre-plimed for you. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking this in here. And uh, now that's running like that. So you guys can see that. So I've just got that tiny little drip. Now, why am I not? I'm Johnny Water Change Power Watch. The note mess on floor. Please note. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm Johnny Big Water Change. Now, why am I not doing just a massive water change on here? Well, the reason is simple. I have shrimp in here, and I am a firm believer that the cherry shrimp hate huge water changes. Uh, I'm not saying you can't get away with it, but they don't like parameter swings. Like, the betta fish in here can totally, uh, totally handle it, but the shrimp cannot. So that is why we're rolling with this little setup like that, dripping it down in there. So I am uh, gonna to just top that off. Uh, it's good for a couple reasons. One, you don't have to worry about uh, like temperature swings. Two, you don't have to. Where's my coffee? I don't need coffee. Uh, you don't do. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, temperature swings. You don't have to worry about like TDS swings or anything if you're doing it really low. You just kind of run like that. So that's how I roll with with this with the shrimp. I just uh, top off now. In the greenhouse tanks, entirely different ball game. I do huge water changes. I've got heavy, heavy plant loads, light fish loads, and I just go hardcore with that. But this here, this is different. This is this is the cherry shrimp tank. Uh, a funny story about cherry shrimp. I had uh, Josh was out of town, and he grabbed a big thing of uh, potassium. He's like, "Dude, I can't find the uh, the TDS." So uh, I found this. I found this right here. This big powder stuff. I was going to use that to mix with the TDS water with the shrimp. What he's going to do is going to dose heavy amounts of potassium into a shrimp tank and uh totally would have killed all of my shrimp while i was out of town like like 300 shrimp so he definitely uh didn't i was like no dude to use the the gh boost but anyway um so now i got this rolling here i've got it decored so now that's just gonna top off and i am uh, i am digging that i'll give you guys the tour so it's hard to like film this though uh i'll show you i'll give you the tour around though so Look, I had a guy back at the Just Fish, uh, now defunct pet store. He gave me one of these filters. I hope you guys can see it. I'm going to turn around here. So you guys he gave me one of these. Now, this is the new the new Fluval right here. This is the, um, I want to say it's the 404. I have to pull it out. This is the newer version. He gave, I, I have an old, I don't have it over there anymore. Uh, but this one right here, this is these are awesome filters. I mean, like this is the best canister filter. And he actually gave me one of these back in the day. He's like, I don't want your first experience with a canister filter to be a bad one. These are legit. So the input comes up to here, and I tuck it down behind there, which works really well. And then I've got the output over here. Now, the output is great. Now, you always want to have surface agitation. So you want to keep this at the top of the water level. And you'll notice it got a little quieter. Now, what our friends at Fluval do is they make it easy. So if you want to have your Zen time while you're cleaning, what you can do, and Brian taught me this. Um, yeah, it was Christy, if you know how much money I was spending at that shop, that guy owed me one. So instead of having this like ruin the feng shui of the water change, you can take this little cap off the bottom here, like this, and now it shoots it down. Now, I'm not gonna leave that on long, but that's got the cap on the bottom and it's shooting that water there, so I don't want to cloud up the tank while I'm doing this live. So uh, there you go. So now it's rolling like that. And then what I like to do is when I leave town or I know I'm going to be gone a while, I'll lower this down. I'm actually going to 
try to raise it up just a little bit. So now it's running like that. So notice I got the duckweed out the kazoo in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually, well, I can't really do it with two hands, so I'm not gonna do it, but I was gonna scoop out some of the duckweed and show you, but it's hard to do. So I've got this running like this, and uh, yeah, now you can see the boost of flander from the top. So the filtering's all set all day. Uh, I trimmed some of the junk ass rippings. I mean, how great of a name is that? I trimmed some of that. That's going out to the greenhouse to grow in the skank tank. And then I got uh, the boost underneath here. So that is the boost of philandra that I'm absolutely uh, loving. You'll notice the boost is underneath the halide. I am running a metal halide on here um, just because I have it and the boost likes it more. This tank does come with a little LED set. Um, for what I'm trying to do, it wasn't quite adequate though. But uh, somebody's asking what a skank tank is. The skank tank is one of my tanks out in the greenhouse that I just grow stuff in. It's not actually designed. So, oh, hey, there he is. And the fish that I was missing is in the mix. So, finally. All right, so here's the betta fish. Oh, shit, there it goes again. Look at that, see that for you guys? Um, the uh, betta fish finally came out though. So, that's good. Always have a towel handy. Happy wife, happy life, right? And the betta fish is out, so he was hiding. So here's the deal with this betta fish right here. First of all, I got him at the, I brought, I bought him at the aquatic experience. Or no, I, I took him with me to the aquatic experience. I brought him back, is this the California? I think I brought him back from Cali with me. And um, I brought him back, and then he was front and center the entire time at a trade show, which most people that bring fish to a trade show, they don't hang out. This fish was hanging out. So he was totally in front uh, all the time. And uh, here's the deal. I hardly feed him. He eats the babies of the shrimp. So it's pretty tight. So I got this like ridiculous shrimp right here in the front getting blown around. He eats the babies of that. Don't forget to hit the like. Thank you. Yeah, please hit the like. Please hit the subscribe if you aren't. Do you like the towels rolling there? So if I was a fish, I would be in that skank tank. Oh, man. So yeah, this is this is actually, I try to not to consider this a skank tank. So I want to give you guys like the full uh, the full outlook on this. So yeah, nice, you know, stand matches, the whole deal. Really digging it. There's my little tray. I always use these trays are great for removing duckweed because you can like uh, float it in there because it's got the little rim on it, so you can float it. There's my net. Um, and this stand wasn't too uh, too bad to put together either. But yeah, the betta fish is out, which makes me happy because I had not seen him in a while. So I'm super pumped that he actually came out. He knows I'm on camera. He's like, yo, I'm on camera. So this is the setup with the water spilled all over it, but you get the idea. And no, I do not run CO2, although I am thinking about throwing this bad boy on there. I am thinking about adding this. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to, but uh, th this is pretty legit. I'm glad the well-timed question there. But I am thinking about adding this bad boy here. That's a beefy looking regulator, huh? And so what you do with these, I have one of these running out in the greenhouse I actually need to show. But um, yeah, these are pretty slick. And what this does, check this out. Uh, it actually will hang on here like this. And then what you can do is just when you want to run CO2, you can run it like that. So that's kind of tight. But I actually currently am not running CO2 on here though, coincidentally. So I'm gonna take that off. But notice this is draining right here, coming down, no problem. And then uh, I'll give you guys the, out, the outlook or whatever. So this is like the whole, like, you kind of got to like bend around to see it. So the baby tears has grown in well, as far as maintenance, uh, I would actually hack this down like really really low like as low as it can go and then replant it and I'm I should plant it back up in there, but um, I Just haven't had a chance to I actually lost my aquascaping scissors, but then he's right there in the mix So he's doing that. I'm gonna get to Q&A in a second. So I got that and uh, yeah, this this got a couple different types of boosts It's like wipe the front for you guys It's what you get when you get it live and if you're liking this, uh, do hit the like button for me. Do share it if you don't mind. And then uh, look at this boost right here. Boost underneath the halide. Underneath is the halide. Looks like that. So I'm definitely loving that. See the sparkly crystal type stuff looking on it? Like how fun is that? Something I don't like about it is this java moss I got growing in here. I wish that actually wasn't in there. But is what it is. So yeah, these are rocks I collected myself. Beta doesn't look happy. Ah, he, I mean, he's pissed. I probably just threw him on camera. But I can throw some food in for him. I had some of those bug bites around. So yeah, this is the tank. I don't do a whole lot with it. Uh, I let it go. And uh, I get to just, you know, kind of post back. I am going to do some Q&A for you all here in just a sec. But I wanted to show you guys 
uh, an update on it real easy like easy maintain tank booze of Flandra, good filter what are the keys light fish load heavy plant load uh, the cherries and the cherries and the betta fish people ask me all the time uh, what's up with the cherries the cherries are actually a part of the the plan with this to be fed so they're like they're part of the deal so like the fish will actually eat the babies like I don't see a lot of babies in here so he gets hungry so I don't have to feed him that often I do feed him about once a week that's really it and I think that's a big tip for everybody too is like when you have a fish tank like feed your fish like don't feed them all the time because then you'll just have to worry about more waste there's the I want you guys to see the close-up of that boost though how that has that color but don't feed your fish all the time getting out of fish keep is going to gardening no I didn't say that uh, but uh, yeah, so there's the Crenum Calamistratum, which I love. And then there's a little bit of bubble action. And my theme with this tank was to do all red. Like I wanted to do the red shrimp and the uh, the red betta fish and the red snails. And the tiger snails didn't make it, but there's the cherry. So that's what's up on this tank. So who has some specific questions on this bad boy? I'm gonna go to some Q&A now for you all. You lovely fish tank people, you. You middle of the afternoon fish tank people, you. So let me just roll like this. Swap this around. Show you the fish. Swap it to me. Turn to you. Fish tank in the background while I answer some questions. So, Krenum is awesome, thank you. Christy, what's up with you, sister? Hope to see you in Chicago. How do you decide what fish to put in here? That was actually really easy. I wanted to do one simple betta fish. I've become obsessed with betta fish recently. I've got like three of them in my uh, greenhouse tanks and this one in here. Actually, three including this one in here. And um, I like them. They're hardy. They're fancy. They're all unique. Like you can find like your own variety of one, which I think is really special. Um, like little snowflakes. What else? Do you recommend CO2 will help plants more? You know, look. I mean, CO2 is great. Uh, it's a big benefit to the tanks. I mean, but the thing of it is, is you gotta have everything dialed in before you jump into that because you don't want to gas your fish. So I always tell people, get through the steps. Um, this actually has a pretty slick setup where you can. As I was saying, um, they, our friends at Fluval make one that you can like turn on for a little bit and it fills up this little chamber. Uh, it's pretty sick. I got to show you guys that. Such a lovely tank, but your betta is sick. Now, he's just hiding. He's just pissed, probably. I'll throw some more food in there, get him happy. He needs a water change. Uh, let's see here. Take fish out and put it in a million dwarf puffers. Nah, I wouldn't do that. I, I like puffer fish. I've actually caught those. I'll link up the video in the comments. You guys can see that puffer fish video I caught. Greetings from the Netherlands. What's up? Yeah. By the way, what happened to your turtle lake? Uh, that turtle lake was actually overrun by cows on my uh, mother-in-law's farm, which was miserable. They let the cows run loose. Sorry for ruining the aesthetic of the scape with the, the airline tubing, but the water's gotta go in, folks. Um, you're gonna put cardinals in there? I'm not putting anything in here. This is it, that's the tank, that's it. It's a betta fish, it's a bunch of cherries, that's it. Like the cherries chill. Uh, can you think of any snail eating companion that would live along my betta? Yeah, you get an uh, assassin shrimp for that, that's easy. Do I ship to the UK? No. Where do you buy your substrate? Um, you can get the, well, our friends at Fuvai, the Stratum substrate. Ah, uh, you can buy a bag of pool for the same 50 pound bag is 10 bucks at uh, pool, pool supply places, Sally Pool Supply, or at Home Depot, they have the Vigoro Pebbles for 50 bucks, or excuse me, 50 pound bag, 10 bucks. Do you ever get snail problem in your tank? If so, how do you reduce snail population? Mm, the biggest thing to not having snails is to not let them in your tank in the first place. I hope you guys can see these guys while I'm talking here. Is to not have the snails in the first place. You can do a five milliliters of bleach in a gallon of water. That typically helps. But um, I like to. Oh, there they go. I like to uh, use a uh, uh, a snail eating snail, like a assassin snail or something. Have you ever consider selling live bears? No. Uh, minimum size tank or pond for silver. I'm not sure, what a right snail is to be honest with you. Can you get Java moss to grow? Uh, short and thick by trimming it a lot. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, what do you do to get rid of gas pockets below your sand? I'm assuming you're saying that's sad. Uh, you would want to make sure you don't have as much sand in there. You want to uh, have anaerobic conditions will mess up your tank all day long. So you definitely want to have less sand and larger grade sand, let more air in there. Good question. Starting to get white slime on my airline tube. Any ideas it was bad? Probably not. What's up, yo? You gonna collab with King of DIY? He needs my help. What's Joey need my help with? 
Uh, we want lights and can at 30 skinches. I got you. Selling live bears, no. Gorgeous liar tail. I, I want to breed that liar tail before I do anything. Would you ever get an eel? Not really. Not really thinking it. Uh, missed the answer, but stream froze. How much space does a crenum need around its base? I leave, I like to leave some space around a crenum. That's a good question there. Good question. Cool. Glad you enjoy it. What are your thoughts on keeping male betta fish with a few female bettas? I have never kept female betta fish. Ever. Ever. I hear it's great. I you can do like a whole harem or whatever. I've never done it. Uh, ever consider saltwater? No. I had a saltwater tank. Actually, the reason there's a hole in this wall behind me right here because I was going to do a refugium in the wall. I just never did it. Never did it, but I did. Why don't you buy more fish? Uh, it's low tech. It's easy. I don't have to mess with it. It's got the uh, the breeding Cardinia shrimp, Neo Cardinia, not uh, not a crystal shrimp. So these are just the Neo Cardinia, the hardy variety that I like. I want those liar tail babies. I bet you do. Uh, why don't you buy more? Blah blah blah. I live in Vineyard County. Good work of tanks. Do you need to do anything or just? I don't know what that means. Good wood for tanks. I've never used vine wood. I couldn't tell you on that. Ceramic rod on the Fluva filter propeller breaks so easily. DIY plastic part. I've never had a problem with the impellers breaking on a Fluva. That's me. You should do a sorority tank. That's not a bad idea. What's up? How big is this aquarium? This is a 26 gallon bow front. So that's why it's hard because you gotta like, you can see the bow in it letting it go like that. Like that's the that's the side view. It's actually a pretty cool shot. It's a bow. Bow's out. What's good wood for plecos? Uh, anything really. Any plants you recommend for silver dollars? None. Silver dollars eat everything. Uh, let's see here. What's good wood for plecos? They'll eat on anything really. Uh, they, they need it in their diet too. Uh, what do you think about putting African sickles and discus together? I don't keep either of those fish, but I would say nope. Think about it. Sickles are way too rambunctious. African sickles are way too rambunctious for discus. No plants for silver dollars. Uh, props to you. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's coming along all right. You can see kind of how I roll with it right here. There's the, the room. But, uh, not bad. You guys a little tour of it. And there's the there's the war zone right there. That's the desk where it goes down. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, great great plant great plants for silver dollar plastic plants. Correct. Uh, let's see here. Do you have any tote with the huge Anubius bottom small tank three air stones to grab? I think that would avoid aerobic conditions. Yeah, I think that would work KPA. How many tanks do you have in the house now? Two. Uh, a 220 over there, and this tank right here, and that's it. Can you keep SA use the fancy goldfish? I wouldn't. Gotta go. See ya. Cool. What's uh, growl with the angelfish? You ever gonna get in discus fish? Now, not really a discus fish guy. Not really my style. Not really trying to do it. Do you like Demosoni barbs? Absolutely. You ever made Osmocot tabs? Nope. I don't, and I'm not a fan of Osmocot because I used it in the no maintenance tank and it didn't do squat and I wasn't happy about it. It didn't work. I wasn't pumped about it. It sucked. So, uh, no, I didn't make this background. I bought it. And there's my dog going nuts over something. Um, when you're going back to your mother-in-law's man-made pond to see your plants put in, you know what? The the cows actually crumbled over those. I need to do another video on that. That was a good video. Uh, who's missing? I'm glad I found the uh, the betta fish. The betta fish was missing. I'm super pumped. He's down here. He's pissed, but he's here. He showed up. Thanks for coming, bud. Thanks for being there. I thought your daughter had a tank. Ah, that's right, Christy. My daughter does have a tank. Man, you're pretty hardcore with that stock and stuff, huh, Christy? My daughter does have a has has a uh, F90 up there actually. Pretty so. Cool. Love that print. Oh yeah, that's of course. Yeah, that's the guy. Hiroko Sai. That's one of my things. Did the B26 come with the background? No, they should do that though. What advice do you have for someone who wants to be on YouTube like you? Here's my advice. You ready? You want to be on YouTube? Make a thousand videos. A thousand. A thousand videos. A thousand. I have 1,200 videos. I just deleted like 400 videos. Make a thousand videos every Sunday starting in 2009 and you'll be good to go. Um, let's see here. Oh, to the guys, a better fish question. You have possible males and females docile enough. Then it's possible, but still very risky if you know what fish for fears. Yeah, I wouldn't mess with it. With the scales. Altum Scalera only tank. Ooh, I do like the... Paul Lewis, you always have some really crazy comments, and I'm sure you're from non-native speaking country, but uh, Altum Scalera tank would be a badass tank. That would be the one fish that I would really like to get. Is a bow front nicer than a regu regular? I mean, look, I like it. I mean, I, I do like it. I'd like to see a bow front like a 75 bow or, or 72 bow or whatever. I never kept them. It doesn't distort the, uh, you can see the bow on it right there like that. 
pretty tight. Uh, show us the other fish tank. I can't. The lights are off and it's dirty. How are your koi? They're doing good. No. Uh, do you only only fire shrimp aquarium? Yeah, that's actually all they're in here is the is the fire variety. You can see one up on that little somewhere up there. That's all I keep in here. Thought I was the man screaming at your dog. Now it's the dog. The dog sucks. Uh, do I float new plant cuttings until they start to form roots? It depends on the species, but generally speaking, yes, you can do that. Christy pays attention. Good, Christy. Crayfish tank mates, none. Uh, I don't know. I don't keep crayfish. Uh, let's see here. What type of ferts do you recommend? I don't know. I've been dropping a little bit of this stuff in there, but I don't use a lot of ferts. I do good water changes. Uh, let's see here. Can you put angel fish in with guppies? Sure. They might eat them though. Altums, please. You know, I, I, if I could get a good source of altums, I, sh I, sh I should do that. By the way, I ran today. I don't know if y'all have been following the whole knee thing. I ran today. Doctor said to run the knee. It feels great. I'm in the process of building 150, but empty the tank. Realize it needs to be re-siliconed. Ooh, what can I do to keep my plants alive? Plants will be fine. Just keep them in the bathtub. Keep a little bit, get a little bit light on them. You'll be good. Have you ever owned a five-banded barb? No. I'm assuming Paragard has melted my valve scenario, but all my other plants are fine. Uh, yeah, that stuff kills Val real quick. Val sensitive to any kind of crazy stuff like that. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on Joey's gallery? I'm gonna spend the night there some night. He invited me. We'll see. You guys call him out on that. Say, yo, you see invited Dustin? I'm gonna go up there. Swim in this 2,000 gallon tank. Bulbitis, best growing conditions. Doesn't care. Likes hard water though, Scottish. You ever using JV Oxane scale? I don't at this time. I will at the uh, Reef Palooza though. What's your favorite live bear? Liar tail. Come on now. Blue crepe fish, mates. How's the pond hanging? It's doing good. I did a video from it yesterday. You ever kept any pet bass? No. You look like the guy from the Matrix. I'm trying. I took the blue pill. I remember nothing. Had a 90 bow, it was great. Really hard to get to the bottom of shorter people. Yeah, of course you need dead leaves. Take a course, blah, 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 blah. Let's see, hello everyone. Does driftwood in the aquarium do anything besides visual appeal? Just took mine out and threw it away because it kept making my tank dirty. I like the look of driftwood. I think it looks tight. And uh, if you think it's making your tank dirty, you need to do some work in your tank. So there you go. Notice the, uh, the output of that is now above or below water. Can you guys see that? Can I see that? Yeah, see now, now it's below the water line now, but we still got that surface agitation. That's the key. Yo, D, thanks for getting me in the hobby. You got it. You're good. Hit you up. You got it, man. We'll be here. Uh, whatever happened to your angelfish with the large uh, <laughs> the large uh, anus coming out? Uh, I, that fish actually went to Brian. Brian has that fish. How do you get live driftwood to sink found in the wild, for example? You boil it. Boil it, boil it, boil it. So, yeah, folks. What else you got? I uh, missed the show in St. Louis, Mom's Hospital. That sucks. Sorry to hear that. Cool. Anybody learn anything? Can I get a subscriber? Can, can, can just one of you hit the subscribe button? Maybe the notifications? Like hit the little little notification button. It's like the little uh, little little bell thing. Growing carpet star granny ribbons Going well, but I want to my more expanded carpet. Do I have star on stock? Mike, I don't. But I, if you email me, Dustin at, or greenhouse at dustinsfishtanks.com, Josh and I can look and we can find some for you. How do you tame corkscrew value? You don't. You let it go. Can you make a Patreon account for Cichlid Tank? Eh, cool. Channel from Sweden. What's up? What's the best driftwood for Bristol? No, it doesn't matter. Uh, super nice one, Dustin. Cool. Glad you guys like it. Yeah, I, I'm not all dirty greenhouse tanks, believe it or not. I do have some that I'm kind of proud of the look of them. This is one of them. It's one of my favorite ones because it's really easy to work on, too. Normal tank to get cloudy after a water change. I feel like I've had to vacuum twice. You really want to switch to sand. Uh, just do your water changes. See you soon. Your answer, yeah. Up advice. I started my channel. You go, blah, blah, blah. I got a shout out from Joey for my upside down aquarium, but I've been watching you. But I've been watching you for five years. Sub, sub me too. You got it, dude. Appreciate your so, subscription. D, would you ever consider shifting South Africa? No, I can't do it. Like it's not worth doing because it's. I, I appreciate the look and I appreciate the opportunity to ship to South Africa, but like it doesn't make sense to have like a hundred dollar tariff. Plus, it takes my guys like ten minutes to type the stupid order in, and then if something happens, it's just it's, it's not worth doing. Um, why do you feel half fish your YouTubers are going to visit Joey at the same time? Maybe Joey's throwing a fish tank YouTube party. I don't know. Any bull biters for sale? I have tons of bull biters for sale. Tons of it. Dustin, I'm cycling my first freshwater tank, 125 gallon. I wish I could just set this down. Oh well. Slap those slobs and like buttons, tank people. Yeah, cool. Carpet in my 46 gallon bow. Love the bow front. Cool. Appreciate it, Mike. Yeah, Mike, we can dig out some starl for you. Uh, I think it's you. Can I get a shout out of my friends, Oz and Sarah? Absolute legend here. And, oh, peace from UK. What's up? Yeah, sure. Can a shout out to Oz, Sarah, and Greg Dunn? UK people, what's going on? 
Planted backlash archerfish like salty Robin Hood. Uh, ooh, that'd be cool. Uh, archerfish would be tight in here actually. Total clean and H2O change. 24 hour water, London clear. I would just uh, you stirred something up. Hi, fisherman. Hug from Brazil. Oh, that's awesome. Brazil, that's crazy. When you go on vacation, do you ship whatever fish tank stuff you find there? Or do you bring it back in suitcase? Depends. I brought uh, fish with me. I brought whatever. Um, depends. I usually bring it on the plane, though. Do you have your own aquatic store? Dustin'sFishTanks.com. Would you ever ship to the UK? No. Thanks a lot from Australia. Wow. Does corkscrew virus really stay at 24 inches? It can. Do you ship to Canada? Yes. Uh, be an awesome party. Cool. Can you elaborate on the first versus dose doing water changes? Somewhat new to plant tanks and have all in one and iron and potassium. All right. So. You don't want to chase elements. You want to chase like, like the entire holistic thing. Like when Mother Nature does a water change in the big rains, it's not just like, well, here's a little bit of iron, here's a little potassium. It's like it's all nutrients, like encompassing, right? So you want to like think like that. I'm not saying you can't fertilize individual elements, but you're better off doing a holistic approach, like dosing heavy and then doing a big water change or whatever. Does that make sense? Like think like Mother Nature. Mother Nature uh, is a hot chick in her mid 20s and she's beautiful and when it rains it rains and it gives you everything all the way down gotcha with that and you going to Peru again I was actually thinking about Peru today I think about Peru every day where are all your mods I don't need them any tra blah, blah, blah. do you have an auto ramp ramp down LED sunrise nope I think that might but I don't know what's up with the, the LED ramp up I don't do that any ideas for 125? I already have 75 cichlids. Oh, that's easy, dude. 125, do like 50 of one type of schooling fish. It would look so sick. Can you add rainwater to your tank? I would do it. Why not? Airwave, wacko. Yo, ever got a snakehead? I had a snakehead back in the day, jumped out. And uh, I, and I don't like those fish because now they're hurting the, uh, hurting the ecosystem in Maryland or whatever. They got loose in the one river. Keep up the great. Cool, yeah, love it. Glad you like the ghetto aquarium. All right, folks. Cool. I'm going to uh, wrap it up here in a little bit. Appreciate everybody. Um, check out the Fluval channel, too. They got a cool, like, oddballs video. They got a rope fish in there, and they got uh, the rope fish and a polypterus. It's not a polypterus Senegal. I forget the name of it. It's polypterus. It's pretty cool. And then uh, tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to have a video about a great legend in this hobby who died. So you're going to want to check that out. Uh, hit the notifications button to get more of these. It's easy for me to do now. The audio seems to be good. I'm in my house. I'm having fun. And I'm enjoying it talking to you all. Scalera or Altum, you got to roll Altum with that. Come on. Tubs outside for live bears now. Cool. So, hey, everybody. So, appreciate everybody being on here. Uh, yeah. Everybody have a fabulous freaking day. Justin, PM me. And, uh, yeah, dude, we will uh, we'll tank on. We'll talk some more. Love it. Good stuff. Stream didn't go down. I only had one call. And uh, that was good. Can you guarantee I'll be, I'll be there in person in first? I'll be in at Reef of Palooza uh, June 24th, 25th. Come meet me there, everybody. Good luck in your hobby. Cool. Tank on, everybody. I'm out. Doing live on Sunday. Yes, I'm going live on Sunday. It's going to be a nice one. Expensive Koi, if you don't mind me asking, it was 300 bucks to Sanke. I would have paid 500 for him. Tank on, everybody. Hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. I'm out. Later.